Welcome to the Pro Advisor Marketing Podcast, where creatives and nerds collide. Designed for today's bookkeepers, accountants, and tax pros, we are dedicated to helping you learn how to market your firm as we discuss the latest marketing strategies that are working right now. Whether you're just starting your firm or looking to maximize your marketing efforts, this podcast is for you, packed with insights on how firms can grow their brand and online presence. This podcast is hosted by Kristen Corey, a marketing expert in the accounting space and founder of ProAdvisor Marketing, and Eric Caceres, who co-founded a successful CPA firm and now helps others build the firm of their dreams through his company, ProAdvisor Brands. Please welcome your hosts, Kristen and Eric. Welcome to the ProAdvisor Marketing Podcast. I'm Kristen Corey, and it is just me today. And I'll be talking about how do you know when it's time to change careers? It is not a marketing topic, but it is something that has been coming up a lot lately with people returning to work and really deciding what's right for them. I definitely had a big career change a few years ago, so I thought I would talk a little bit about my experience and how I now know that this is the right path for me. You guys are more creative than you get credit for. No, really, I, I've seen some of the brands, websites, and content you have come up with, and it's great. There are plenty of you who have this content creation stuff down, and maybe you even enjoy doing it. But that is just one piece of the marketing strategy puzzle. A marketing strategy consists of content creation, yes, but there is psychology, design principles, and marketing trends that cannot be harnessed just by using Canva. This is where we come in. ProAdvisor Marketing is now offering one-on-one -on -one consultation services. Book an hour on my calendar to get a highly tailored input on your brand, website, and marketing strategy. You have my undivided attention, and I will come to the table with plenty of tips of my own. I'll look into your website forms, hashtags, social media reviews. Where can we improve and implement a bit of strategy? Just starting out? No worries. The one-on-one -on -one consultation is great for those on a tight budget who just want to make sure their website is optimized or get some input on their brand. The hour is yours. What will you do with it? Schedule your hour by visiting www.proadvisor, that's P-R-O-A-D-V-I-S-O-R dash marketing.com. I'll see you soon. So welcome to today's episode. This is a little bit different from what we normally do and what I normally talk about. Uh, usually it's me and Eric and we're talking about branding and uh, podcast episodes and or blog posts for accountants and web design and all those kind of things. Um, but we're kind of taking a little bit of a different approach with this episode. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about how I landed in accounting uh, and then how I eventually moved from accounting to marketing and really what guided me on this big change in career. Um, it is not the conventional route. However, a lot of accountants do find themselves not necessarily going with, uh, with the path that they maybe thought they were going to follow in college. Um, so, I mean, a little bit of background, if you are new to pro advisor marketing, or if this is the first time you're, you're hearing about me. Um, hi, I'm Kristen. I am the owner and CEO of ProAdvisor Marketing. My background, my formal education is actually in accounting. I have my master's in accounting. I did auditing for a while. I did bookkeeping for a while, but now we do marketing services specifically for accountants. And so and that is really why we, we work specifically for accountants is because that's our background. That's, um, all of me and me and my two co-founders, Eric Caceres and Rebecca Caceres. Rebecca's a CPA. Um, Eric and Rebecca are married. Eric has this, you know, great branding background, and we are very much tied into the accounting community. Eric and Rebecca also have their own accounting firm, ProAdvisor CPA. So, you know, very tied into the accounting community, understand you guys, and it is my background. Um, but but how I got started in accounting was I mean, you know, it goes back to high school. My my dad was really big on making sure that when we went to college, we picked something that would be able to pay our bills. <laughs> he wanted us to have a really good career. And so I was looking into things like law and architecture. 
And one day he came home, he was working actually at KPMG at the time and their tech side of things. And he was talking about the accountants he knew and how he met this accountant who said she got to travel all the time uh, doing auditing for KPMG. Um, and that was the story I originally got. Uh, it is not quite as accurate as I think um, maybe it was communicated. Uh, I was, you know, kind of had this idea that I would be traveling across the country doing auditing and, you know, helping people manage their finances better. Um, there is not a whole lot of travel in accounting and my perception of what accounting was was very different. But um, I figured it would be a good career and I, you know, like most people, I was interested in numbers and math at the beginning. So I, I started studying accounting in college. Um, it was, you know, it was a struggle, but I figured everyone's struggling. This is a difficult career. That's just going to be how it is. Um, I did my master, I'm sorry, I did my bachelor's and my master's in four years. Um, so pretty proud of that, but I was really motivated to just do well. Um, as I was finishing up my bachelor's, my, uh, college is Zusa Pacific University. They actually were starting an MPA program, uh, which is a master's in professional accountancy. And the whole idea behind this program is that you go get your master's to get those last few credits you need for the CPA exam. And I knew I wanted to be a CPA. Um, it was kind of, it was not explicitly said. We, we talked, me and Eric talked about this in a prior podcast episode, but it wasn't explicitly said, hey, you know, you need to go work at a public accounting firm and become a partner one day. It was more subtly implied. Um, oftentimes, those were the people that would come back and talk to us on, you know, those educational nights where people come talk to college students. It was um, just a frequent subject of, oh, we know this partner at this firm who can help you get you in. And um, it seemed like that was supposed to be the goal. Um, I know some close friends of mine felt the same way. I don't know if necessarily everyone felt that pressure uh, if you were studying accounting in college, but that was definitely the perception that you will go to a public accounting firm, you will get your CPA license, and you will eventually become partner. Um, now, <laughs> the reality of the situation is most people uh, do not make partner. Most people become overwhelmed, overworked, um, and we kind of see things maybe a little bit differently and we kind of go and often, oftentimes go work for our clients. Um, but that was kind of my goal. I was in college. I was thinking, okay, I'll go get my CPA. I'll go work at a public accounting firm. And so to do that, I wanted to apply to the master's program. Um, the director of the master's program, he was my professor in some of my courses. Um, it was a fairly small accounting department. Um, everyone kind of knew each other more or less. All the professors knew you by name. Um, and as I was applying, uh, he basically said I needed to get my GPA up. I think I had, it wasn't anything, you know, shamingly low. I think I had maybe a 3.2 GPA and he wanted me to have a 3.4. And he said, that's his goal for the, this new master's program for all of the, the people applying and in the program to have a 3.4 GPA. And he said, he doesn't think I'm going to be able to get into the program. So I, I keep working hard. I'm trying to get my grades up. And I had actually done an internship with a, I guess, regional accounting firm, uh, MGO. And they provided primarily auditing services to uh, government entities. So cities, states, that sort of thing. I did this internship. I had done plenty of other internships prior to that, but uh, fairly... I would say early before I graduated, I received a job offering from them. And I was one of the few people that far away from graduation to receive a job offer. And he kind of, this director of the, you know, master's program saw that and basically decided, well, or this is what he told me. He decided, well, you know, you seem to be really good and people seem to like working with you. So we'll, we'll give you a shot in the master's program. Um, but really, I don't, I don't think you're going to be a CPA. I don't think you really have the grades or the studying for it. Uh, just so you know, which was, you know, so kind of him to tell me about that. Um, and really at the time I just kind of ignored him because frankly, I didn't feel like he knew me. I didn't feel like 
he knew what I was capable of. I didn't feel like he really came from a place of having respect for me or understanding how motivated I was. Um, and I also knew I had really good relationships with with the people um, at my upcoming firm and they would support me. And I knew I was studying hard and I was like, you know, I'm motivated. I'm going to do it. And I felt, I very much felt that deep in my bones that I'm going to pass this exam. Um, but then, you know, I get into the program. I start my master's. Um, once I'm in the program, I realize I am definitely not the person in this program with the lowest GPA. Um, you know, I wasn't top of my class, but I definitely was not uh, struggling. Uh, and I, I realized that maybe when he had been advising me on my GPA, he had some other motivating factors. And and this does, I, I do say this, um, not necessarily to just complain about my past, but this is going to kind of relate to, I guess, those of you that are out there changing careers. Um, but yeah, he, he, he told me that and uh, that, you know, he was worried about my grades and turns out I, I, I did just fine. Um, so I do the program, get my master's. I then go and work for uh, this auditing firm, MGO. And frankly, you know, even accounting students today, if you are in an accounting program and you're debating on, you know, maybe starting your own firm or going the public accounting route, I would recommend at least doing one year in public accounting. And and the reason I say that is one, you are going to learn so much. I There was so many things that started to click when I was in public accounting. I'm sure if I was in there longer, I would feel even more um, confident in my accounting background. I mean, obviously. Um, and then also really just being there, I learned how hard people work. I mean, it's, it's so hard to really think back to those days where there during busy season, it was required. We put in 10 hours a day and typically that was not an issue at all. I mean, I rarely, I rarely remember thinking, oh gosh, I'm not going to hit my 10 hours. It was usually we, we hit 12 hours fairly easily. Um, and so the people, people in public accounting, my gosh, the, the hours are crazy. You guys work so hard. And frankly, I think oftentimes people in public accounting are underpaid and there, there needs to be, I think, more respect just for people, um, people in the accounting profession, because people really don't understand what it takes to do public accounting, and even further, I mean, to be a partner. I have so much respect for them and and the drive and the, all the knowledge they have to really, gosh, it, it's a, very impressed, frankly, with the people in, in public accounting. Um, and I enjoyed it. I, you know, I, I loved, uh, I loved learning about the different things, but, you know, I think like anyone's first year in public accounting, it was stressful. <laughs> um, you know, we, I remember being excited one day coming home thinking, oh my gosh, I'm going to hit rush hour traffic. This is so exciting. I haven't hit rush hour traffic in months. Um, and that's where I was at. <laughs> and so I was doing this. Um, I was enjoying it. I was learning a whole lot. And then we had our like quarterly reviews. And the quarterly review was, I mean, I guess it's like any review you have in at work. Um, reviewing performance, reviewing kind of all these metrics, you know, following orders, timeliness, all those things. And we met with like, I think our senior and like maybe a manager. And we also met with, I think we all met with a partner as well. Um, and I sat down and I met with uh, the partner of the firm of our, of our office. And she was someone I really respected. I felt like she really took the time to get to know us, even though I was, you know, just a first year and didn't have a ton of experience, but it felt like she really did care um, and felt like she was open and honest. And she tried to give us opportunities to succeed and really show what we got. Um, but she sat down with me during my my review and she had a conversation of me with me basically saying, I don't see you as an auditor. Um, you know, you have this creative streak. I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure she said creative because um, I think that definitely stuck with me. But she said, you have this creative streak. And, you know, when it comes to the auditing and and having to do things in a very specific order every single time. Um, it's not really your strength. And we kind of see you more, you know, maybe in the consulting area. And the thing about that is that there was no one, consulting is more something that they reserve for the people that were experienced. They had tons of years under their belt. Um, it was kind of un, unheard of for someone at my level to be in the consulting area. 
And she said, you know, this is kind of the closest thing we have to, to accounting, but in a creative space. Um, and so she's like, you know, we kind of want to just start training you and, and seeing how you do in this area and, and figure things out. Um, and I was ecstatic at the opportunity. Um, she wanted to see some writing examples and I was really excited to kind of consider this other area of accounting um, that I thought, you know, maybe I'll be able to, you know, use, be a little bit more creative and talk to people um, and kind of use some of these other skills that I wasn't really able to use in auditing. Um, simultaneously, as that conversation happened, my then boyfriend, now husband, um, was finishing up his time at the Air Force Academy. And there they have a program where if you, or they had a program, I don't think it's still there today, but if you minor in French, you can basically apply to do this graduate program and live in France and get your master's. And we found out he got it. He got into the program and he was basically saying he was going to move to France that summer. So um, I was kind of faced with a very, it feels like very pivotal decision of I can either stay with this firm that I, I love. I mean, my best friend was there and, you know, these people that I feel like really respected me and a partner that saw something in me and was really giving me these, frankly, incredible opportunities to advance and succeed um, that I wanted. I, I definitely wanted the opportunity. Um, but I also had this other opportunity of moving abroad with my boyfriend and um, being in the military, I knew we would be fin financially secure and traveling around Europe. And uh, I, I decided to quit my job and go with uh, go with moving to France. Um, I definitely don't regret it, but looking back, um, it it definitely it was kind of the start of putting me on this path toward a more creative field. Um, and I and I took that kind of advice of what the partner said to heart that, uh, hey, you know, maybe accounting isn't right for you. I see you in more of this kind of creative area. Um, but I figured, you know, I'm going to France. I'm going to go have fun now. I'll, I'll think about that later. And so I move abroad and I start uh, looking for work. Um, it was at the, at, this was in, this was like maybe six years ago, six, something like that. Um, and I start looking for work and at the time, remote working wasn't really a thing. No one was really even acknowledging that I could work remotely. Um, and so I turned to online work, just searching for anything I can find. Um, I think I taught English for a while, which was short-lived. <laughs> um, that just wasn't fun. And uh, eventually I found myself on Upwork, actually. I have a very big soft spot for Upwork because um, it's what's introduced me to marketing. I, I started with blog writing. That was kind of the, the first few jobs that I had. I was being paid significantly less than minimum wage just to get, if you've been on Upwork, you know, it takes a while to get your profile up and running. So to get my profile up and running, I d took projects for peanuts. Um, and I there was even one job that I did for free for a while. And I, I built my profile and, and over time, as, as I would get more and more jobs, um, they kind of turned from writing a blog article about, you know, health and wellness and, you know, the 10 uh, shoes that you need for this summer um, and kind of these fluff articles. Um, they turned into actually really better and more fun marketing articles for lawyers and business coaches. And, um, there was one that was like a team building company and I had, I was working on a lot of cool projects. I was getting about 10 plus proposals per week. I was making significantly more money. Um, and I enjoyed it and, and I was getting a lot of great marketing experience and, and, and I enjoyed kind of the changing of, uh, marketing over time and being able to be creative and manage my own schedule and kind of all those things that come with remote working. Um, so we, we had that, we were living abroad and then time kind of came for us to move back to the States. And, uh, as our story goes, when I moved back to the States and I started, um, thinking I want to go back into accounting, um, I want to try giving that consulting gig a, a chance. Um, I want some stability. Um, we were living in a very small town in Texas and there were no jobs, <laughs> There were no jobs in accounting. There was no accounting from nearby. Um, 
if you're a military spouse, you understand that, that uh, oftentimes we live in remote areas with not a lot of work opportunities. Um, and so I'm living in this small town. There's no jobs. I take my work online. I start looking for online bookkeeping and accounting firms just to find something. Um, and most of the accounting firms and people that were talking to me were asking, you know, yes, we will, we'll interview for the bookkeeping, but, but do you also, can you do marketing for us as well? Um, which is kind of the start of the whole marketing for accountants. And I eventually landed a position with ProAdvisor CPA um, with uh, who owned by Eric and Rebecca. Um, they were my bosses at, I guess, my prior bookkeeping job. Um, and I worked for them and I was doing the bookkeeping thing and I would do some marketing. I would write some blog content. I'd do some social media posts. And after about a year of uh, being in this bookkeeping position, Rebecca set me down for our somewhat annual review, um, and she kind of posed the same question to me of, do you really see yourself as an accountant? Um, and I I said, well, you know, I mean, like, yes, it's what, I, what I'm doing. It's, you know, I'm studying for the CPA exam. You know, I like it. It's, it's nice. Um, and she said, well, here's the thing, because, like, we'll have meetings, you know, team meetings and we'll be talking about something and you'll say, Oh, did we, did we post this on social media? And you're thinking of things that, you know, maybe we didn't consider. And you're kind of always bringing in this marketing side of things when we're talking about accounting. <laughs> and she basically proposed the idea of starting pro advisor marketing. Um, and she also, you know, told me she didn't see me as an accountant. Um, and I kind of, before, you know, we go any further, I, w- I want to stop right there and kind of address the three times in my career people came to me and told me, I don't think accounting's for you. First time was in my master's program when uh, when that teacher told me he didn't think I was an accountant. And I didn't listen to him at all. And frankly, that was because I didn't feel like he knew me. I didn't feel like he had respect for me. I didn't feel like his intention of why he was saying I shouldn't be in the program was coming from a place that he really cared about what direction my career was going. Um, He just said accounting wasn't for me. He didn't offer really an alternative, which is not what you want to hear from your college professor. The second time was from someone I really respected and I really wanted to work for um, at a public accounting firm. She, she not only, you know, she had the sandwich compliments of, she said, she, you know, I'm strong in these areas, but I'm not a strong accountant. And she had a plan and saying, Hey, this is, this is going to be a win-win for both of us. You know, we want to try this out for you. And I think you'd be better on this path. Um, and the last time, you know, it was Rebecca coming to me and saying, Hey, I think this is a, an area you're more qualified in. And, you know, obviously I have a lot of respect for Rebecca and I, I knew she was a good leader and she had my, my best interest at heart even if she was looking losing a bookkeeper at ProAdvisor CPA. And so basically posing the question to you of if you are thinking about changing careers and you've had multiple instances where maybe you felt like this isn't the right path or people have come to you and say, you know, this isn't the right job for you or, you know, you're, the job that you're doing right now, you're too busy or the job you're doing right now, you don't make enough money or, um, you know, maybe it's silly what you're doing or, you know, the the millions of things people come to you and tell you about your work. Um, I would really recommend taking a step back and looking at what they're saying and, and having a uh, professional skepticism about what are they asking? Are they, are they bringing this up because it benefits them in some way? Are, or are they really trying to look at my best interest? Are they looking into things that I'm interested in? Are they saying, you know, you hate your job, go find, go chase something that you love? Or, or are they saying, you know, is it, is it, is it a parent that wants you to go and pursue something different because they think it'll make them look better as a parent? Is it a friend who maybe, uh, thinks you work too much? and wants you to spend more time with them and they don't understand that the job that you're doing right now or is really your dream you know i know maybe a lot of you are studying for the cpa exam and if that's really what you want to do then yeah you're you're probably gonna not have a lot of time that you spend with people and you're probably going to be missing um friendships maybe dwindled down and so are people encouraging you maybe to just give it up because they selfishly kind of want more time with you. So I, I think it's 
interesting to kind of look at the people that are giving you this advice or the people that are in your ear and really kind of determine where are they coming from? Are they coming from a good place? Are they coming from maybe their own selfish desires? And, you know, maybe they are coming from a good place and they do want to spend more time with you. And and there's nothing wrong with that, but that doesn't necessarily mean um, that you should give up what you want to do just, just because people want to spend more time with you. Cause the, you know, you're the one that has to live with that decision. And you're the one that at the end of the day has to put in eight hours plus of work. So you might as well do something you really enjoy. So that's kind of uh, addressing the different people that kind of I'm sure you have in your ear um, if you're debating on changing careers. Something else to consider if you are debating on a career change uh, is do you actually enjoy what it is you're doing? And here's the thing. So throughout all this time from when I graduated my master's program until I started Pro Advisor Marketing, I was studying for the CPA exam. And I actually passed part of the exam when I was at uh, MGO and, and doing public accounting, but I had to let it expire when I was living in France. They didn't offer the American exam at the time. And um, yeah, that sucked. Uh, but I let it expire. And I, when I returned to the States and I was interviewing and eventually working at ProAdvisor CPA, um, I decided, decided to pick the exam back up and I'm studying for the exam and I've debated on sharing my score, but why Why not? Um, <laughs> I decided I would start with FAR. Uh, first time I took it, I got a 50. I thought, okay, I'm going to study harder. I'll do better next time. I take it a second time. First time I got a 50. Second time I got a 51. <laughs> I improved by one point. And so I'm thinking, okay, I need to do something differently. The way I'm studying is not working talk to Rebecca. She goes, you know, you, you waited a while between exam one and exam two. Maybe you need to take it sooner, have a shorter window so you retain that information better and then study the other areas that you didn't study. And I thought, okay, I'll do that. So I took the exam a little bit sooner. Exam one, I got a score. I got a 50. Exam two, I got a 51. Exam three, I got a 52. (laughs) So each time I took the FAR exam, I improved by one point. And you know, it's a hard exam. I I wish there was some nugget of knowledge or encouragement for all of you studying for the CPA exam that I can give you right now. But all I can say is it's a hard exam. Um, And I hated studying for the exam. And I know you're supposed to hate studying for the exam. But I think back to that time of when I was struggling with the exam, when I was just working and my whole mind, my whole brain was everything accounting. And I just felt so overwhelmed. I mean, I, the weekends, I protected my weekends. I feel like I couldn't do any chance I could have outside of the, the hours that I set for studying. I was not studying. I wasn't doing it in my free time. I wasn't working in my free time. I, you know, enjoyed every single minute of being, you know, off work or not studying. Compare that with today there are plenty of times where it's the weekend and I will just be working because frankly, I just want to work. It's, it has nothing to do with, you know, being a business owner and being busy or having to catch up. I just work frankly, cause I like it. And, you know, in December pro advisor marketing, we took two weeks off. I intentionally spent those two weeks business building and doing things for pro advisor marketing. Um, I, of course, you know, Christmas, I, you know, spent time with my family and my hours, I, my hours were definitely cut back, but I spent that time really working on the pro advisor marketing because I enjoyed it. And I can't think of a time in my enca- entire accounting career, my internships in college or public accounting, or you know, when I was under pro advisor CPA or my CPA exam, I can't think of a time where I wasn't scheduled in to work on something. Um, and I just did it because I enjoyed it. And that is kind of the second big sign to me that this is the right career change. Because now I spend weekends working because I want to. You know, it's not every weekend. I definitely don't want to give the impression that I'm working 12-hour days, seven days a week. Um, But Sunday morning, you know, before my husband's up or before, you know, my dog's up and everyone's doing everything, if I wake up early, um, you know, I'll be in my office working. There are times when we're at night before we go to bed, on a Friday night, sometimes. I know that's sad, 
but we'll be watching a movie and and I'll be, you know, working on refining our website just because I like doing it. That I think is uh, is one of the biggest signs to me. I look forward to Monday. I, I do not dread Monday at all. I think there's some, oh gosh, he's like a, is it Ed Milet? It's one of those like bro influencer guys who are like, you know, go get the bread or I don't know. No. <laughs> What is that guy? Gary V. Very much the Gary V. guys who are very, very, there's one of them that had a quote, some guy who basically said, you know, I look forward to Mondays. I get pumped for Mondays and I kind of roll my eyes, but I also, I very much am excited for Monday. I, I love my morning where I have my coffee and I'm putting together my list of things I want to do for the week. Love my office. I love being in kind of my zone of work. Um, And I can understand how people become workaholics if they really enjoy their work, because even I, I think this is kind of something that I really hope a lot of people can find because I'm generally, genuinely love the work that I do. Um, And so I guess, you know, it's easy for me to say, if you don't feel that way, go find it. Um, I don't want to be flippant. And I recognize that that is a privilege that I have, that I was able to kind of make this transition and start my own business. Um, But I I think that is one sign that maybe, you know, wherever you are spending your free time, if you're doing something as a hobby, um, you know, let's say, for example, Let's say you're an accountant or in a CPA. Um, And I'll just use this example because I saw a girl on Instagram that was doing this. Let's say you're an accountant or a CPA and you make make stickers, accounting themed stickers. She she has this really great account and they're the cutest stickers. Um, But they're just cute accounting stickers. And you want to do something more creative and you do it in your free time. Maybe, and and you're not happy with your career. Maybe that's a sign that you should be switching. Focus on on where you're spending your free time. Um, Because I'll say even, you know, while we were in France and before I was working and kind of just looking for work, um, I put together a travel blog and I was blogging and I was sharing photos and stuff. And it's in a very similar realm of what I'm doing now. So if you're debating on career change, second piece of advice would be uh, to consider where you spend your free time. Um, cause it can very well point you in a direction where you're, you're excited for Monday and excited to, uh, to get into work. So the last thing, um, the last bit of advice that I have on, uh, trying to figure out what career change or if you, if a career change is right for you, um, is really, if you're listening to this podcast episode, um, maybe, maybe you're just interested in my story. And <laughs> if you are, um, I appreciate it. But uh, if you're listening to this podcast episode, maybe you are feeling like something's off. Um, Maybe you completely identify with me and you just are looking for a story to relate to. Um, But it could definitely be a sign that maybe you are looking for something different at work. If you are a business owner and you own an accounting firm, good news. You should not be doing the day-to-day bookkeeping. Uh, You should be more of the visionary doing high level things, working on your business, rather in your business. That is, that is that's your goal to grow your, your business. Um, you know, you shouldn't be doing the bookkeeping for too long. Um, but if it's a business owner work that you don't enjoy, the business building, um, the marketing, the networking, the pro- establishing processes, if that's all the stuff you don't enjoy, then maybe you should consider the freelancer direction, you know, and, and not growing a team. And Focusing on increasing your prices and not necessarily uh, increasing your client list and just figuring out a way to kind of have a personal brand and and keep things within your capabilities. Um, And so, yeah, um, if you're really trying to figure out kind of what your next career step is, I know the pandemic really gave us a lot of time to think. Those are kind of the three pieces of uh, three, three signs or things that I would talk to you with. Um, If you were, I guess, just sitting here across from me, you know, the first thing is, do you have people in your ear telling you what you should and shouldn't like or where you should and shouldn't go? Um, Really assess what their values are, where they're coming from, whether they're coming from a good place or not, whether they have your best interests at heart, whether they're giving you an alternative or making maybe a suggestion on, you know, how to improve. Um, Or do they have maybe selfish goals like they want (laughs) their master's program to have a higher stats. 
And then my second piece of advice would be figure out where you spend most of your time. Are you spending most of your time or your, I guess your spare time learning about accounting and diving into applications and trying to figure out how to become a better accountant and that's where you want to spend all your professional development time? Or are you maybe dabbling in some hobbies that uh, maybe hint at a different career path? And then the third piece of advice is obviously listening to this podcast. If you are looking for a way to maybe switch careers, um, I will let you know there are a ton of people in the bookkeeping and accounting field who are in the exact same position as you exact same position as you and have figured out a way to make it work. Um, and so I, I believe you can as well. Um, there are so many resources out there. I'll be sure to link a few of them in our bio so that you can go ahead and check them out. Um, but I hope you consider us as one of those, uh, resources for helping you figure out how to grow your brand and, uh, tell your story. So that is all the time that we have for today. I hope you find yourself in a career where you are excited for Monday and I will see you next week. Thanks for listening to today's episode. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe to our podcast. If you're getting value from us, please leave a review on Apple Podcasts or wherever you are listening from. Also, feel free to share with your friends and follow us at facebook.com slash ProAdvisorMarketingUS. Now get out there and build your story, tell your story, and sell your story. See you next week.